thank you for coming to tonight's performance of the Beethoven Sonata, a uh, piano sonata in C minor, uh, just the second movement. Uh, before we start tonight's performance, there's just a few things that I want to touch up upon to sort of enrich your listening experience and give you more of an idea as to what to listen to and as to what your expectation should be for the piece. Uh, a special thing about tonight's sonata is that it's in a very specific musical form. There's all sorts of musical forms, concerto, sonata, but tonight's form is a five-part rondo form. And I've written down the blueprints for five-part rondo form, and I'll be explaining this tonight and give you more of uh, an idea as to what's going on. Uh, form's job is to be a blueprint for the piece and set the listener's expectations. Now the form is an, is alternating themes. Each one of these is a, sort of a different section that has a different theme from one another, sometimes the same as other parts of the rondo, and it's to give the listener a contrast and a more enjoyable listening experience. Now it starts off with uh, the first theme, which is called the refrain. It's the returning theme. It comes back a few times in rondo form, and it's established as home base for the piece. Now let's take a quick listen to what you should expect to hear for uh, as the refrain of the piece. times in this rondo, and it's, just, it's the returning theme and sort of the dominant theme of the whole piece. Now the second section of five-part uh, uh, five rondo form is called an episode. I've labeled the first one as B here to establish that it's different from A. The episode's job is to give contrasting material to the A section and to give the listener something else to listen to and something else to process so we don't get sick of the same theme coming back over and over and over. So we'll take a quick listen to what an episode sounds like and that it's different from the first refrain. This is the first episode. You can tell that that one's, that theme is a little bit sadder and, but it's more rhythmically active than the first theme and it gives you something else to listen to and something else to compute. Now after that comes again the refrain, the refrain, the return, the first rondo main theme. Now this is the same theme as the uh, first refrain and its job is to again bring you back to home and remind you of what the main theme of the melody of the piece is. It's the same as this so I won't bother playing it for you again. And after that comes another episode. This episode is different from the first one, which is why I've labeled it C instead of B2. And this one's job is to give you even more contrasting uh, melodic and uh, harmonic uh, music. Now after this uh, comes the final return of the main theme, the refrain theme, and uh, the third refrain. I've labeled this A3 and its job is to finish the piece and be the fifth and final part of five part rondo and give you one last listen to the main theme. Now, it would be kind of weird if we just went chunk this theme, chunk this theme, chunk this theme, chunk this theme. So there's kind of musical gems sandwiched in between. Now, uh, for example, and this isn't the only one, in between the second episode and the final return of the refrain is a retransition. The retransition is uh, sort of a re-entering into the final theme. It would be weird just to throw you into the theme one more time. And so uh, let's take a quick listen to a retransition. Retransitions are usually unstable. They usually want to go someplace, and they uh, will. And in this case, it's going back to the original theme. One final part is sort of a nub at the end after the five parts of rondo form is the coda. The coda is always in the same style and mood and key as all of the refrains, and its job is to sort of tie everything together and finalize the piece for you.
I uh, hope you enjoy the enjoyed the lecture, and I hope you listen and expect and know what's coming and enjoy tonight's performance of Beethoven's Piano Sonata. Thank you.